Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Tuesday, everybody. Yesterday we covered the comments of PRC ambassador to France Lu Xiaoye, which sparked anger and controversy in Europe over the weekend. Lu had questioned the sovereignty status of post-Soviet Union countries. While speaking to French media on Friday, suggesting that former Soviet states lacked quote effective status under international law, end quote. In a rare public repudiation of an outspoken diplomat, Beijing yesterday Monday afternoon tried to walk the comments back, firmly rejecting them as not official policy. People's Republic of China Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning expressed at a press conference, quote, "China respects the sovereign status of the republics after the disintegration of the Soviet Union." End quote. Soon after, the Chinese embassy in Paris posted a statement online, saying that Lu's remarks, quote, "on the Ukraine issue, were not a statement of policy but an expression of personal views." End quote. However, commentators note that the embassy had initially posted the entire transcript of Ambassador Liu's remarks in both Chinese and French on its official WeChat account Monday morning, several days into the controversy. Within a few hours, the transcript had been removed. People's Republic of China bureaucratic statements typically go through thorough reviews before being posted, so it seems unlikely that the initial Monday posting was a mistake, but rather that the embassy leadership still believed that it was appropriate to post. Of course, this is pure speculation, which we should avoid engaging in. On Monday, too, the French Foreign Ministry summoned the Chinese ambassador to clarify Beijing's position. For his part, French President Emmanuel Macron, who, as we have seen, has used a softer tone towards China in the hopes of working with Beijing to find a solution in Ukraine, expressed on the episode, quote, "I think it is not the place of a diplomat to hold this kind of language." End quote. The same day, EU foreign ministers held a meeting in Luxembourg to discuss the comments as part of a wider event to quote, assess and recalibrate the EU stance towards China. End quote. And more than 80 European parliamentarians have signed a petition calling for the French government to declare Lu persona non grata. As we said yesterday, this controversy will likely calm down in the following weeks. But episodes like this are avoidable diplomatic mistakes that Beijing cannot afford to make too often, as it tries to maintain its objective of preventing Europe from moving too close to the U.S. in its China policy, especially as the Ukraine war rages on. And there is still the curious question of why Liu, a seasoned and intelligent diplomat, made the comments in the first place. Quote, why would Liu even think this? Will he be punished for a statement that has damaged the PRC efforts to improve ties with the EU? Are these ideas circulating in non-public discussions in the bureaucracy? Is he leaning towards what he thinks she believes? End quote. While we are on EU-China generally, one further development. In an interesting move, the EU's top diplomat Joseph Borrell, in an article in French media published on Sunday. Called for European navies to patrol the Taiwan Straits because Taiwan quote concerns the EU economically, commercially, and technologically, end quote, and to quote show Europe's commitment to freedom of navigation, end quote. State media in China have published a slew of articles about the comments over the last 48 hours, perhaps in part to distract from Liu Xiaoyi's controversy. One state-run piece called the comments extremely dangerous and signal a regression in the EU stance on Taiwan. Another more aggressive piece, written by state-run Global Times, titled "Borrell and His Ilk Should Avoid Leading Europe into a Ditch," expressed, "Quote: Just like a senile old man who has long been out of touch with the times." If European warships still want to show off their might in the Pacific today, the result would only be an embarrassing failure. End quote. Adding that Borrell was a quote, ignorant hypocrite. End quote. 
Next up is China seeing a second infection wave. Some netizens appear concerned. The word COVID was at one point the most searched topic on Weibo over the weekend, with the topic of second wave receiving more than 95 million views as of Monday afternoon. State media has sought to calm nerves, writing that most people infected are those who did not contract the virus before. It's difficult to verify this as accurate, however. The chief physician in the Respiratory and Infectious Disease Department at Beijing's Youan Hospital was interviewed by state media yesterday and expressed that, quote, the risk of being reinfected with the virus will increase, but most people who are infected a second time will have relatively milder symptoms. Thus, the blow of the second wave to the medical system will be less severe than in December. End quote. Official figures, which admittedly are largely unhelpful at this point, also don't yet point to a spike in infections. At a summit last week, popular and outspoken epidemiologist Zhang Wenhong expressed that various groups should get a booster shot and that people should start preparing for a possible second wave and the arrival of new variants. Next up, has a Chinese province gone bankrupt? Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit that like button. It's just me making these episodes every day, it's a lot of work, but your guys' support is a huge source of motivation. Subscribing and sharing is a huge help as well, and for those who can go the extra mile and help me keep the channel financially sustainable, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. Thank you so much, everybody for the ongoing support. Over the weekend, state-owned asset management company China Cinder issued a message on WeChat saying that it was setting up a quote, 50-member financial expert group and other measures focusing on serving the real economy, preventing and diffusing risks, helping the reform of state-owned enterprises and bailing out real estate, end quote, for the entire province of Guizhou, the poor and highly indebted southwestern province of Guizhou, may be the first provincial level government to go through a restructuring of this kind and receive a bailout from the central government. If this is the case, it's a significant and deeply concerning development. Strictly speaking, provinces are not independent legal entities, but rather part of a larger government system and thus cannot be described as bankrupt in the strictest sense. But in its current state, without a bailout, the province appears to be in a de facto state of bankruptcy. A think tank in Guizhou itself recently warned of growing risks from the province's massive debt, writing, quote, Constrained by limited financial resources, the process of debt reduction is extremely difficult. Relying solely on its own capabilities is no longer effective. End quote. In the carefully worded language of official think tanks, this is a startling admission that the province can no longer support itself and must rely on central government support in order to avoid default. Chinese analysts agree that the statements and the moves are significant, with Chinese financial media outlet Tai Xin writing on the report, quote, to what extent this article represents the local government's position is unknown, but such a statement is unprecedented. End quote. The analysts add that since 2017, the balance of local government debt has been rapidly increasing at an average annual rate of 16.3%, far higher than the nominal economic growth rate of 7.8%. At the end of 2021, the local government debt to revenue ratio was 105.8%, exceeding the red line of 100% for the first time. Quote, Although the overall government debt risk is controllable, the rapid growth of debt is still a major problem for the Chinese economy. End quote. According to recent calculations by Guosheng Securities, the province of Guizhou holds some of China's quote, riskiest local government financing vehicles end quote, with outstanding debt at 46.1 billion US dollars. And of course, this all has implications for the wider systemic issues of local government fiscal conditions. Quote, Beijing is still kicking the can down the road, finding bridge finance for weak local government financing vehicles to contain systemic risk. Local government financing vehicle bonds account for close to half of onshore corporate bonds outstanding, 
so they cannot afford a large default of public bonds. But the structural issue is not resolved because of the imbalanced revenue and expense sharing between local and central governments. End quote. Earlier this month, Agricultural Development Bank of China said its president met a delegation of senior Guizhou officials who expressed hopes that the big state lender would, quote, help resolve financial risks, end quote. Yesterday, U.S. outlet Bloomberg writes that these developments, quote, indicate the sense of urgency among Guizhou officials to prevent a high-profile default. End quote. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are, and I will see you all tomorrow.